We've come out to Retzer Nature Center in Waukesha where hiking trails, special events, and a planetarium offer plenty of chances year-round to explore and learn about the natural world. In just a few minutes, Elizabeth Kramer celebrates Smokey Bear's 75th birthday with Wisconsin DNR Secretary Preston Cole. Then we'll learn about volunteer efforts to clean up the Rock River in Watertown. But first, I'll take you fishing for trout and salmon on Lake Michigan out of the Port of Kenosha with Schools Out Charters. I'm Dan Small, and it's time once again for Outdoor Wisconsin. Summer to fall, winter to spring, from Green Bay to where the same, Croy sings from Catamarain to Superior Shore. Outdoor Wisconsin, Outdoor Wisconsin. This aquarium at Retzer Nature Center contains only native species found in many of our inland lakes and rivers. The Great Lakes harbor a different mix of native species, but also some non-native species like salmon and rainbow trout, which are popular with sport fishermen. Last summer, Dan Manick and I joined Bob Langyar and Jeannie DeBono for a Lake Michigan outing out of the Port of Kenosha with Captain Shane Jack of Schools Out Charters. I'm out on Lake Michigan out of the Port of Kenosha today, and I'm out with Captain Shane Jack of Schools Out Charters. And Shane, we got a dozen lines out, caught one fish already. Um, how's the fishing been? Uh, fishing's been good this season. It, it started a little later than normal. Uh, the, the, the spring didn't want to give up on us. The cold temp stuck around. So the majority of our fish stayed to the south uh, you know, through May. Um, but once, once June hit, we had, we've had very good fishing. Um, we had mixed bags, cohos, kings, lakers, some real nice steelhead. Um, kind of the exciting part of our season has been the size of the fish. Uh, never before have I seen uh, the number of 20 plus pound king salmon, uh, big cohos, big steelhead. Uh, so it's been a great season. Can't complain. Well, it looks like we got a good day for it, so let's hope we get some. Absolutely. Skip up or what? Yeah, you're doing an excellent job. Yes. How's the deal? Heavy? Heavy. Well, Shane, talk about the rigs. You've got a dozen lines out um, in various uh, depths and setups. What we have is on the sides, you'll see uh, six copper lines. And each of those copper lines are, are let out a different amount, uh, a different distance. Uh, some, some are as shallow as 30 feet and some are as deep as 100 feet. Uh, this time of year, those lines are really effective because not only are they deep in the water column, they're a ways away from the boat. If you, if you see the planer boards there, they pull the, the line to the side. Um, with, with clear water and, and warmer temps near the surface, those lines are usually pretty good. Uh, and then if you look on the side of the boat, we have dipsy divers. Um, it's, a, it's a round disc, that's all it is, that, that dives. Uh, when a fish hits, it, it releases the dipsy diver and it no longer dives and we can bring the fish in. And then the three rods on the back of the boat are downriggers. It's a, it's a heavy weight. We attach the bait to that weight. We send it down to whatever depth we want. When a fish hits, pulls it off the weight, we reel the fish in, we bring the weight up separately, reset it, and hopefully do it again. We're really targeting uh, steelhead, some coho, and some chinook today. How far out is it? That fish was down uh, about 200 feet, um, just under 200 feet down. So you're doing a lot of, you're, yeah, you're doing a lot of reeling, and that's because that, that fish was way, way down. All right, lift up nice and easy. Ha. All right, I caught a little Chinook. But I'm gonna get the hook out of the net and then we can take your picture with this fish. Nice job. Well, the sport fishing uh, certainly has taken off in the last uh, 
two, three decades yes, since they were stocked. Yes, it has. Well, Bob, you worked on this lake with DNR many years ago, didn't many, you? Many years ago, late 60s, early 70s. So that was when they were first stocking the salmon. That's correct. Salmon, trout, playing around with different fish. Stay right where you're at. Okay. Stay right where you're at. Now lift up nice and high. All right. Another king? That's a there coho. A coho, oh yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Fat coho. Boy, a fat one. What was the thinking back then? They're not native here. Yeah, as we talked about that, introducing a non-native species to the Great Lakes uh, concerned some people. But we had issues with invasive species out here that we were trying to control also. The salmon were introduced to feed on the alewives. The alewives were accumulating on shore. They were creating um, smelly beaches and um, interfering with recreational opportunities. And uh, nobody liked all the dead fish floating around and what was collecting on shore. And uh, I think that was part of the mindset to get the program started. So when you first stocked the fish, what else did you do? We were trying to learn how they were moving around to different temperatures, where they were going. Um, we developed the rearing ponds for the salmon along the, the lake shore. We were trying to learn how to catch them, and we were having a difficult time initially trying to catch them, and we were inviting professional fishermen in to show us how to catch the salmon and the trout, and trying different baits and different techniques, and learning how to catch them so we could teach the public how to catch them. Got it. Nice, nice. Fish. Uh, Shane, this fish has no adipose fin. That's clipped off. What does that mean? That means that this fish was stocked by uh, by the DNR. Uh -huh. um, there is some natural reproduction, so some of these Chinook salmon are native to the lake. However, this one is not. So about four years ago, this fish was put in uh, put in the lake by the DNR. And uh, it being mid-August, this fish was probably returning to the Port of Kenosha uh, for its uh, for its fall spawn. Uh -huh. So this fish, uh, if it had not been caught, would have gone up the river, spawned, and died. Correct. Yep. This fish, this fish would spawn and die within the next month, month and a half. How old is it? Uh, four years old. That takes four years for a fish to grow that size. Okay. And that's about 20 pounds. Yeah, right around there. Yep. We can put the scale on them, but right around 20 pounds. Beautiful fish. Nice job. Thanks, man. My first salmon. There you go. <laughs> that's a good one. Good way to start. So what's it like to be out here? 40 years later. Well, it's always special. I mean, especially when the fish are biting. As long as people are out here catching fish, I guess they're having a good time. Woohoo! Yes. All right. Yeah. Another good eating one. Today we have a pretty good sport fishery out there uh, offering many different varieties of trout and salmon. Beautiful fish. Well, that's our third species now, Shane. Three species, yeah. yeah. Chinook, <clears throat> coho, and steelhead. Yeah. yeah. Nice job. Thank you. People are still fishing and enjoying it, and uh, it's offering a lot of recreational opportunities for a lot of people. So today we caught um, lake trout, king salmon, coho salmon, and rainbow trout. Okay, so that's that's a pretty good mixed bag. Well, Captain Shane, we got pretty good haul here. We've had a good day, I'd say. Definitely, definitely. Thanks a lot for coming out. It was a pleasure having all of you on the boat this morning. Well, thank you. It's a great trip for, for me anyway. You guys have a good time? Great time. Great time. Pretty nice mixed bag of fish, too. Absolutely. Yeah. Caught my first salmon ever. Thank you so much. Hey, you did a good job. A great day on the water with Schools Out Charters out of the port of Kenosha. Smokey Bear is an iconic figure that has helped the U.S. Forest Service warn about the dangers of uncontrolled wildfires for decades. He was created in 1944 and the first Smokey Bear costume was made in Mercer, Wisconsin by forester Frank Brunner, Jr. And the rest, as they say, is history. Well, 2019 was Smokey's 75th birthday, and Elizabeth Kramer joined Wisconsin DNR Secretary Preston Cole to celebrate the milestone with Smokey and friends last summer at State Fair. He can spot a fire before it starts to flame. That's why they called him Smokey. That was how he got his name. August 9th, 2019 is Smokey Bear's 75th birthday throughout the state of Wisconsin and commend this observation to all citizens. Happy 75th, Smokey. Smokey Bear, 
Smokey Bear. So Smokey is um, a nationwide icon and um, he has a special place in our hearts here in Wisconsin. Um, he actually, with the first Smokey suit was actually created here in Wisconsin in, in Mercer in the 50s. Um, it was actually made out of real bear hide. So Smokey, um, when he travels around the state, he always has a handler. So I'm going to be his escort for today because sometimes um, he has trouble um, seeing his feet. <laughs> I think what's really special about Smokey is that he resonates uh, with young children and then also adults and, and older individuals as well. So um, he's a character that um, hasn't changed and we hope to preserve and keep him that way and keep his message um, really special. I think that we all have to take some personal responsibility, whether it be um, nurturing our forests or preventing fires. I think we all play a part in how we protect our, our land and our landscape. I don't think people realize that it's we are empowered to, to make changes and to understand and know our role in how to prevent fires and how to you know plant trees and um, harvest trees in a healthy manner. So it's really it's really important that we educate ourselves. Forestry is is, is, what, is a huge industry. I think we have over 17 million acres of, of forest in Wisconsin so it's a it's a big part of, of how we um, our industry and, and our economy and it's a very important thing of how we educate the public so I think for every every new forester in in, um, in, our, in our program it's a rite of passage and um, it sometimes can get very uh, warm um, today we've had some very good weather so we're, we're very grateful for that but it it's, it should be on everybody's bucket list to be in the suit um, it's a really fun experience and who doesn't love getting bear hugs and high fives all day. Thank you. I've been Smokey and Smokey's handler. Oh, I was wow. The young forester on the St. Louis Forest District, you get the opportunity, as my boss said, you get the opportunity to be Smokey. <laughs> what was it like? It was hot. <laughs> they give you ice packs underneath, but it's, it's a hot suit, but you smile all day because of the children who uh, you engage with and the families who want pictures taken. It was a wonderful experience. I would say one of my best experiences today. <laughs> Wisconsin's forests are always under attack, whether through invasive species and through forest fires. And so we have an active role in educating local cities, towns, and villages who act as our eyes and ears on fire prevention. So we support those uh, rural fire departments through grants and technology and equipment to be our eyes and ears because quite frankly, those rural fire departments are our first responders to forest fires. And in doing so, we get an early opportunity to put those fires out before they devastate the landscape, the land, and of course, the timber. Smokey is what I would call the legacy of true outdoor life. I mean, uh, Smokey's role is to be the emissary of goodwill, remind folks about, you know, uh, preventing forest fires, but also is just a good hugger. <laughs> He's the best hugger. I mean, every Smokey is a good hugger. Were you a good Smokey I was a hugger? great hugger. I bet you. I, I'm probably, of all time, one of the top three huggers who's been Smokey. I'm sure of it. <laughs> I'm absolutely sure of it. Okay, hey, thank you. Happy birthday, Canada. Thank you. As Smokey says, only you can prevent wildfires. We'll tell you where to learn more about Smokey Bear later in the show. Right now, let's head to Watertown, where a group of dedicated volunteers are working hard on another conservation project with the goal of restoring native fish, like those on display here in the Retzer Nature Center Aquarium. I'm here in Riverside Park on the Rock River in the city of Watertown. And the Rock River has changed a lot over the years, and we've come out today to learn about some of those changes and the efforts of a group called the Rock River Rescue that's had a lot to do with it. Talk about uh, the value of the river to this city. So the river in Watertown is a critical piece of our, our history and our future. We recently went through a branding effort and one of the things that was identified from people inside our city and outside of our city is our rich recreational history and it's anchored for us on the Rock River. Um, it is one of the, the cornerstones of our community and really of our region and it's a place that is, serves many different populations of people. How has the river changed over the years? So I know that there was a period of time where the river was 
at a higher level. I've heard people would um, you know, water ski right in the area that we're around right now. And then I know that there were times that we were heavily boating the river. And I know there's been a period of time where there's groups that focus a lot on the river and care a lot about the river, but the general public um, started to not think of the river as the asset that it really is for us. So in the last five years as a city, we've been trying to focus on it being more of a gem. Talk about the Rock River Rescue and what they've done. The Rock River Rescue has served an incredible service to this community. We are a lean government. We don't have the resources that I would love for us to have, and the Rock River Rescue has really picked up the slack where we haven't been able to fulfill those needs. Um, cleaning the river, maintaining um, you know, the, the shores of the river, um, and really making the river more accessible to all, all types of people. And that's something that we haven't had the capacity to do in the past. I'm going to try to keep the net a little tighter this time as well. Okay. Talk about the history of Rock River Rescue. The Rock River Rescue started in 2002 with six members. It was born really of, of a necessity because the river was, has been neglected for years. Um, beautiful body of water, plenty of habitat but very heavy on the carp population and just remnant populations of game fish and panfish. So six members got together, we decided what we were going to do. We initially chose the 154 acres that are located in Watertown and decided that that was going to be the area of, of, our, of our concentration. Uh, decided that we were going to stock game fish and panfish, remove carp, and promote the river as an attractive destination point. The residents of the city and the city really uh, adopted us um, and have given us fantastic support. Our initial six members have grown to over 100 and the 154 acres has grown uh, to 60 miles. Uh, we now take care of the water between Watertown and Lake Sinisippi in Houstisford. There's about 60 miles of water there. No, oh, northern. Yeah. It's a small northern. We tried to introduce a, a population of fish around the carp population to give us some uh, biodiversity. So they're spawning successfully. We've stocked uh, flathead catfish, we stock muskies, we stock northern pike, walleyes, smallmouth bass, uh, perch, crappies, and bluegills. Since 2002, we've stocked over one million fish. We have removed a couple hundred thousand carp out of the river. Carp, because of the way that they feed, they stir up sediment in the water. Uh, game fish are site feeders, and they're not able as, as well to prey on the carp fingerlings, on the baby carp. So it's kind of a, a downward spiral. Uh, more carp uh, leads to fewer game fish. Fewer game fish leads to less competition for the carp, so there are more carp. All right, here you go. And by the time we started, there were a lot of carp, very, very few game fish. And now what's the situation? And now the situation, the, the carp are not the, only, are not the only fish species in the river. And I'm gonna pull up right here. Mm. I started uh, my affiliation with the Rock River Rescue Group uh, last year. I met uh, Tom uh, through a sale of native fishes and Tom is a customer and a friend of mine. Um, he told me about the group and when I found out the magnitude of their accomplishment and when I came out here and sampled the river with Tom I was just blown away. From what I'm told the river was kind of very undesirable years back and the fishes we're finding in here now are really good indicators of, of very good water quality and uh, pretty diverse fish assemblage, I would say second in rank in southeastern Wisconsin to the McGuanago River, which is the most pristine water body in the state. Oh, there's a spot a fin shiner in there. All right. And blunt nose minnows, maybe a sand shiner. Right here we have several different species of uh, minnows um, and one, one game fish as well. The diverse minnow assemblage here, which they, they did not stock minnows to the river, the minnows just kind of came back. And uh, a, a good small fish assemblage is, is another indicator of really good water quality. And um, the fact that we have naturally reproducing uh, game fish in here as well is, is a really good indicator of what a healthy water body this is. Talk about the pond. 
Hayden Pond. A lot of the houses that are in this town are, are Cream City brick. And the clay for that brick was dug out of Hayden Pond. And very much like the river over the years, Hayden Pond had become neglected. Rock River Rescue was trying to come up with some projects to do, and we decided to take the pond under our wings to fix it up. One of the things we have done is we have created a nature trail that goes almost all the way around the pond. The paths, it's a, quite a walk. It could take you 20 minutes to half hour to walk. There's a lot of nature to see. We have literally cleaned out the pond. The pond had 50 gallon drums in it, a bicycle, trash, bottles. Uh, we cleaned that out. We also, starting last year, have started stocking the pond with hybrid bluegills and bass. Uh, people have kayaked out here. During the winter, they have done a, a skating pond out here, so people have been ice skating out on the pond too. It's a beautiful area for somebody to come and eat lunch, read a book, fish, walk, and enjoy nature. You want to try to shoot a big long cast up there as parallel to the shore as you can get? Okay. We'll see what happens. The, it's it's more of a big picture, um, I think. It's it's not just about fish. The river is is extremely healthy. Lots of bluegills in here. Mm -hmm. When we netted fish last fall, uh, we we caught hundreds of inch to two inch long bluegills. So yeah, plenty for the fish in here to eat. There, I got a big one. Ooh. He's. I'm going to say pike. <laughs> <laughs> That would be a good guess, yeah. there he is. What we have here is a really diverse community of fishes, and that indicates how wonderful this water body right. is and the, the magnitude of the accomplishment of, uh, of this group. Now, would that be one you folks stocked last fall, you think? Or? Uh, he could very well be. Uh -huh. Yeah, when, when we stock them, they're, some of the bigger ones approach this size. Healthy looking nice pike. healthy fish, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. What they have done is nothing short of miraculous and I really hope that uh, what their model is could be used in other parts of the state or the U.S. or even uh, possibly even a broader reach than that. Retzer Nature Center has a lot to offer visitors and here to tell us about some of the opportunities is PR coordinator Emily Heller. Emily, how did Retzer get started? Well, John and Florence Retzer purchased the 90 original acres in 1938 and they worked hard to restore the land to its original beauty by planting about 26,000 different trees and shrubs around the property. And in 1973, Florence Retzer donated the property to Waukesha County Park System. And in 1974, the very first nature center opened in the Retzer's original home. And soon after that, in 1985, they built the new nature center. And in 2005, they renovated to what we have here today with the planetarium and a learning center inside for a whole bunch of different environmental education programs. Well, that's quite a history. What are some of the things people can do when they come here? There is so much for people to do here in all seasons and for all ages. Um, the main thing is the environmental education and the nature of the property. There's about five miles of trails to hike and there's so many different ecosystems to go through and explore. Um, and a big variety of flora and fauna around the property. And then the greatest part is you can come inside and learn even more about the natural history of the state, check out some live animals, learn about the underground of the prairie system, uh, check out a planetarium show. And then the newest exhibit in there is different ways to recycle um, waste management and water conservation efforts. I noticed there are some school kids here today. Do you do a lot of programs with schools? We do a great amount of programs with the schools all around the local area. There are lots of field trips that we have planned here for the kids and depending on the season, there's so many different things to explore. Um, in the winter, they do winter tracking, learn about migration and hibernation. In the spring, they go down to the stream and pond and learn about the pond life and about the watershed that they live in. Um, and then inside, they can interact with the exhibit and learn how to recycle right. Tell me about the variety of programs you have going on. There's something to do in every season at Retzer. One of the newest programs we have is some citizen science program where we ask people to come out and gather some data about the natural world and we use that data to make decisions on land management. It's a great opportunity to volunteer, learn about um, snakes and the wetlands and monitor bird nests and come out and help us determine what kind of species we have. I don't think there's any place in the state that offers so much under one roof on one piece of property. The Nature Center grounds 477 acres to explore. The interior has so many different exhibits where you can learn about the natural world. 
can take in a planetarium show and learn how your actions matter by recycling right. Well, Emily, thanks for telling us about Retro Nature Center, and I really like your cat. <laughs> Thank you. To learn more about this week's features, log on to milwaukeepbs.org and search local programs for Outdoor Wisconsin, or visit the Milwaukee PBS Facebook page. I'll be at Wisconsin Public Television's Garden and Landscape Expo February 7 through 9 at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison, and the Milwaukee Muskie Expo February 14 through 16 at Washington County Fair Park. So stop by our booth and say hello. Well, next time I'll explore the Brule River in Douglas County with guide Damian Wilmot and a group of Gordon Macquarie fans. Elizabeth Kramer attends UFO Days in Dundee and will join Rick Culver, Lauren Voss, and Maddie McHugh for a spring turkey hunt. Saying goodbye from Retzer Nature Center in Waukesha, I'm Dan Small. Join us again next week for Outdoor Wisconsin. Flash of a white tail moving through the pine. Long vowel of the owl in the evening. Loon on the lake, a muskie on the line. Outdoor Wisconsin. Free yourself like an eagle in the air. Feed yourself like a bear in the blackberry, like a hawk. Perch and stare. Outdoor Wisconsin. When the working life is way too much You're in too deep, way out of touch Lace up your boots, get out of town I Walk in the wild and sit down and listen Listen to the sounds of the critters of the night To the wind and the leaves and the little river run Coyote brother howling in the moonlight Outdoor Wisconsin Hike, fish, hunt, camp, sail, canoe Ski, photograph, laugh, do what you want to Stick your nose where the wild rose grows Outdoor Wisconsin Outdoor Wisconsin